Hey guys, welcome back. Uh, today I'm doing another My Labels series, and as you can tell by the thumbnail, I'm going to be doing Umbrella Entertainment, local, probably one of the probably the best Australian. Uh, what would you call them? Uh, I guess labels that release that release film, uh, especially kind of um, like horror and somewhat cult sort of films uh, that otherwise we wouldn't get local releases of here. So. Um, yeah, being Australian, I obviously have a fair few of them. Um, there's a heap more to collect. They do a lot of different, uh, variations and stuff, but I'm pretty happy with what you get from the label. Um, yeah. Uh, first one here, Bliss and VFW double feature. Uh, Joe Bego's film. I can never pronounce his name properly. Does both of these. Uh, Umbrella don't do many double features. Um, I think this is a really cool one to put together, not just because it's from the same director, but um, I don't know, just the style of the film. I guess it is because of the director, obviously, but the style and colours of the films are very kind of similar. But yeah, great movies. Uh, I'll just go down like this. Uh, we have The Babadook. Um, usually they don't really put their releases in thinner cases, but this one's a lot thinner than usual. Um, just as a comparison, there's like a regular Australian release. It doesn't look like much, but it's slightly thinner. Um, this was a really cool movie. I only seen it the once, um, well, the one time, sorry. Um, was pretty cool. I like the, um, the grief and mental aspect to it. Uh, people who've seen the movie and... You know, understood it, know what I'm talking about. It is an Aussie film, which is cool. Uh, the kid's super annoying, but he's meant to be annoying, guys. <laughs> I can't, like, uh, I think it's funny when people kind of go, oh, the kid's annoying. It's like, well, that's what he's meant to be. He's meant to be pissing his mum off to the point of her breaking. Um, yeah, <laughs> I just see that everywhere, and it kind of annoys me. Uh, next up, we have Autopsy of Jane Doe. This movie actually really surprised me. Um... A lot better than I expected. It was just, um, yeah, really creepy atmosphere in this one. Um, doesn't have the ratings label on that because this was a, uh, like an X rental. So I've flipped it over so it doesn't have kind of the horror sticker and that sort of thing on it. But can't even get that in. Um, yeah, the atmosphere in this is super creepy for a modern film. I think this was like 2000 and. 14, 15, maybe, maybe even 16, I don't know, but, um, yeah, if you've been, I guess, on the edge of this one, definitely watch it, because there's definitely so many creepy moments in that movie. Next up, we have John Carpenter's They Live, another one I've only seen once, really liked it, though, I kind of lost interest in the last, maybe, 10 or 15 minutes, I thought it was a bit weird what they did there, but other than that, it was awesome, um, I thought Roddy Piper did pretty well. It's the first time I've seen him act in anything. Um, God, I can't remember his name. The black guy, his mate, the one that's in The Thing. Uh, Keith David, is that correct? I can see that name on the back. I think it's him. The choreographed fight scene they have in the alley. Like, that's next level. <laughs> it's so much fun. No doubt Roddy Piper would have helped them somewhat with his wrestling background. But yeah, really like this film a lot. Next up, we have uh, The Blob. Uh, this is the original and the remake. And it also has Son of Blob as well. So it's like three movies in one, which is really cool. And uh, something Umbrella doesn't do very often. But they do make limited editions that are numbered down there. So 2,300 of these were made. So disc one, you get The Blob remake. And disc two, you get the original Blob plus Son of Blob. I haven't seen the original or Son of Blob yet, but um, I do really enjoy the remake. I think it's a lot of fun and the effects are really awesome. And yeah, just take a moment to look at that cover work. I think it's fucking sick. <clears throat> Next up, Texas Chainsaw. 
the original, uh, the ultimate 40th anniversary edition. Um, yeah, this was one of the first Blu-ray, or not one of the first, but when I started collecting horror Blu-rays, I remember picking this one up and was really happy to get it. Um, a nice edition of the original. Um, cause there's a lot of editions out there. This is one of the better scans. I don't think it's a 4k scan or anything, but it's one of the better ways you can watch it without having a 4k. Um, yeah. And just a ton of special features, all the documentaries and a few interviews and audio commentaries and stuff like that, but not much to say. It's the original Texas Chainsaw guys. Next up we have the, I believe this is a New Zealand film, Body Melt. Um, very interesting film. It's not something that I go back to too often. But um, yeah, definitely some fun moments in this film with like body horror and stuff, as you can probably see by those um pictures and that and there's a few um tv like aussie tv actors in this that i noticed if anyone in australia ever watched neighbors uh harold from neighbors is in this which i found really funny i used to watch neighbors when i was a bit younger but um yeah this slip case they don't really umbrella don't do a lot of slip cases this one's really boring compared to the um <laughs> the really cool artwork underneath but yeah i wish they kind of put that on the slip instead of just this pill um, but yeah, still pretty fun movie nonetheless. Definitely check it out if you haven't seen it. Uh, this is in a recent pickups video, uh, Masters of Horror. It's got three documentaries on it from one about Argento, Bava, and Carpenter. Still haven't watched any of it. Um, I'll probably only watch the Carpenter one for now because I've only seen a handful of Argento and Bava movies, not many at all. I really need to kind of fix that, but. Yeah, pretty cool. It's just an eBay pickup for like five bucks, which is pretty cool for these old Umbrella DVDs. You can tell probably in some of these, like the, what would you call it? That's the newer sort of logo they use on most things. Um, and on the spine, they have a, I can't even see it, um, like a U with an umbrella over it. And then the older ones, they have like this umbrella that's kind of like cut in half because it's like horror. And on the top, they have a little... Uh, little umbrella do I it's not going to focus at all is it nope <laughs> but yeah you get the picture cut pretty fun 2000 slasher um one of their more recent horror releases still like about a year ago I think this came out but it was cool because they did a 4k restoration of it so looks really good and it's a slasher I never would have known about otherwise so it's really cool to have and that they release things like that uh, Night of the Creeps, uh, one of my more fun movies, that's for sure. Tom Atkins in this is just so funny. The old thrill me every time he answers the phone. Um, so many cool special features on this one too. I actually haven't watched any of them, but I'd like to watch... Oh, I think I've watched The Making of the Creeps. I think that's about it though. But yeah, really like the artwork on this too. I think it's the original artwork though, but yeah, let me know. I got Dark Age. Haven't watched this yet. Got it in a trade with a guy on YouTube here. Um, it's got a young John Jarrett from Wolf Creek in it. And it's a crocodile film. So it's got to be interesting, right? Giant rubber crocodiles. <laughs> so yeah, I'm looking forward to that one. Want to watch it pretty soon. We have the uh, Night of the Living Dead remake from the 90s. I uh, definitely prefer it over the original. Uh, I think it's one of the better zombie movies out there, really. I really enjoy it. I think Tony Todd does a great performance in this. And that's just some of them. Yeah, that's the reversible artwork there. Some, it's funny. Some Umbrella releases have reversible art and some don't. I wish they always did because if they did things like this, it looks so good. Um, next two I'll just show back to back is, yeah, Halloween 4 and 5. Um, I believe these are pretty rare now. I've seen someone recently sell them for like 60 or 70 bucks, like each, um, on Facebook, which is kind of ridiculous because, um, I think, well, I know this Halloween 4 has the audio issue, which I'm pretty sure was the same thing that the, well, not all of them, but some of the Scream Factory box sets had the same issue where for about 10 minutes, the audio was... 
a couple of seconds ahead or behind of the text or the, the voices. But yeah, pretty cool releases. Only a couple of little audio commentaries and trailers as the features on these ones, but they are kind of a bit older for Blu-ray releases. Um, and it doesn't really matter about features to these because they're not very great sequels in my opinion. I know people blow 4, but I think 4 kind of sucks. <laughs> Um, People Under the Stairs, really fun film, Wes Craven, watched this one a handful of times and really like it, um, delves into the poverty of other, uh, what would you call it, they're in the projects and I think the mum's dying of a disease or cancer and this little fella's got to break, try and break into some rich people's houses to get some money to get his mum treatment and yeah, breaks into the wrong house, that's for sure. Um, yeah, super fun film with a bunch of comedy in it too, which I find great. Um, Reanimator. Um, this is one of my favourite Umbrella editions for sure. I just love the artwork. Um, and this was one of the first, again, when I started horror collecting, I always heard about this film, but this was a blind buy, this edition. Um and the cool thing about this one is it's one of those numbered ones and it's only numbered to a thousand copies. Um, it does have <clears throat> two cuts of the film, the unrated for 86 minutes and the integral cut, which is 104 minutes long. I have watched both of them. Um, I do prefer the unrated version just because this style of film only needs to run 80 to 90 minutes. The 104 minutes one's good for a little bit more on certain scenes and stuff, but I don't think it's needed. Um, it's a two disc edition, each cut, and it does have reversible artwork with uh, the original artwork on it. Um, but yeah, I definitely prefer this artwork for sure. And it, pretty sure it's yeah out of print and pretty rare because it's only to a thousand copies, so it's pretty cool. Next up, we have Hellraiser Bloodline, uh, the fourth in their series where they go to space. <laughs> Um, not a terrible film, but very drops off a lot from part three. I think the original three are the best films in the franchise. Uh, this one's all right for what it is, that's for sure, but it's better than the ones that come after it. Um, <laughs> but yeah, it's not bad. Give hell, well, give Bloodline a watch if you haven't. Another one I got in the same trade, um, Razorback, giant killer pig movie in the outback of Australia. Seen it once ages ago, can't really remember it, but I remember enjoying it, so yeah. Razorback. Uh, Hatchet 2. This was actually like an ex rental when a blockbuster was closing down near me, so it was cool to get that there. Um, yeah. Not the best in the Hatchet franchise, but a lot of fun, that's for sure. Uh, Danielle Harris comes in as the main girl and does a fantastic job. <clears throat> And, yeah, there's more Victor Crowley and more kills. So, nothing wrong with that. Another recent pickup. Scream, uh, little scream Queen. I almost said Scream Screen then. Um, yeah, I explained this in my last pickups video about Mark Patton uh, being gay in the, like, what is it, the, the 80s. Um, yeah, trying to be a gay actor in the 80s and the difficulties of trying to hold your sexuality in and stuff like that. Um, yeah, very interesting documentary, so check it out if you haven't seen it and you like that movie. Uh, we have Dolls, um, yeah, awesome, awesome film. I only seen it once, like a long, long time ago, but it's so much fun. Is it Brian Usner and Stuart Gordon? Um, yeah, just a lot of fun. It's only 77 minutes long, so it's a super quick watch, and yeah. I don't know. It's just a fun little killer dolls and stuff is always fun films to me um, for laughter and some gore if they have it. Uh, next one here, we have Drive in Delirium, Dead by Dawn. Um, showed this in my last video as well. It's just a trailer compilation. Uh, goes for like five, five or six hours of nothing but horror trailers, which is really cool. And they do release a lot of them. So if you're interested in that sort of thing, look on Umbrella's website. Next up, we have Silver Bullet. Um, probably my favorite werewolf movie after watching it. I really enjoyed the relationship that the characters had in this film. Uh, like the kid with his uncle. It was played by Gary Busey. Uh, it was really cool. Um, 
yeah, I don't know. It was just really fun and interesting and just a great, like, who's the werewolf story. Um, yeah, I don't know. I didn't expect to like it as much as I did. And last up here, uh, Dario Argento, Sleepless. I uh, haven't watched this one yet. Um, someone was just selling these on Facebook for like two bucks each. And I just said, I'll take all your horror, all your horror stuff that you have. And this was it in there. So um, it's pretty cool. It's got a documentary or two documentaries, the making of the movie and eye for an eye or an eye for horror documentary, which is pretty cool for an old DVD. Uh, let me know if this is worth watching guys i haven't heard much about this one i know someone said it was like his last good film um yes yeah, uncut version apparently so that's sleepless guys uh let me know what you think of the umbrella label uh do you collect umbrella if you do you overseas guys collect umbrella i'm interested to know if that's something you guys have available over there or do you bother importing them because i imagine importing stuff from australia costs a fair bit of money so but yeah, guys, I uh, hope you enjoyed my umbrella collection and uh, thanks for watching.